Hey, welcome back. Thanks for joining me. This is another in the dev blog series for the farming and community life simulator game, Homefront Harvest. This game takes place at the turn of the century uh, in a little farming town in the United States. And it's an exciting time because there's a lot of political, economic, social upheaval. There's a lot of invention. There's a lot of hope for the future, but definitely a lot of challenges as well. So stick around and let's dive into what we were able to accomplish. Okay, so I started off the week pretty annoyed at the game. There was this stutter that was happening. I'm not sure if you could see it here in this little GIF, uh, but it made me go out and search for different fixes. And after reading a lot of threads online and asking in the Godot community, what I decided to do was to build the actual engine off of a version of the source code that purported to have a fix uh, for, for this jittery issue. And so what you could see I'm doing here is I actually downloaded the version of the source code that had this fix in it. Uh, this is a, a commit off of the branch for those of you who have, have used Git and some software engineering before. Um, pulled that version of the source code down and here I am compiling the Godot engine. What's nice about Godot is that um, you can go in and fix it yourself, or there's a, a really strong community and there was someone who had a fix and I could uh, grab their version of the source code and compile it. And this is the first time that I've compiled the Godot engine and it's taking a while. This has sped up a lot. Uh, so this is time flying by. Uh, but this is the lengths that I wanted to go to to make sure that uh, I could get rid of that jittery feeling to the game people describe this as table stakes. It's just, you need a smooth, smoothly operating flowing game. You know, that kind of jitter or stutter will just take somebody really right out immediately of the experience. And I just didn't want that to happen. Um, and so, you know, this is the beginning of me working with Godot. I wanted to make sure there was a way around it. And so I was able to compile that version and run the game off of it. Now, I think it helped. Uh, you, you don't really see the resolution of it here, but there are a few other project settings and then running the game in full screen mode actually seemed like it resolved a lot. So there's, there's uh, sort of a confluence of settings that you can do uh, to, to really smooth out some of these, some of the jitters that Godot has. So this is the game as it is right now, as of this recording. I have re-implemented the uh, planting of seeds, watering, hoeing the dirt, uh, growing crops, and time is sped up, in-game time is sped up here so that the crops will grow. And then when they're done, they'll give a little sparkle. Uh, and then we can harvest them. And the inventory is next on my list of to-dos. Okay, the inventory certainly is a big part of uh, the next to-dos, but also is focusing on the loop. So this is one thing that I will build and then I will rework and then I will build again is the farming and growing loop of uh, planting. Uh, we have tomatoes in here, but I'm adding scenes for potatoes, radishes, and onions next. I have a whole bunch of other goodies in terms of plants and then crossbreeding of plants that will go into the game. Uh, but the the focus, the game feel, as, as a lot of game designers talk about this, needs to be really on point um, in terms of the loop needs to be satisfying for individuals. And I think a lot of that has to do with the time system. Games like Stardew Valley really worked out how much time is, is uh, satisfactory uh, or satisfying in a day to where you still feel like there's a lot to do, but you've done a lot in the day. And so a focus on the game loop uh, is really where I'm going to spend my time in the next week building that inventory so you could see it. 
what I'm going through now are different folders I have where I have a different manager for the, the crops, the things that you actually harvest um, versus the plants that are existing and growing in the world. There will be a link between the plants that you harvest and grow down and the new generation of seeds that you'll get in the game um, to the point where you can crossbreed and potential for blight on the seeds. And then I think also some remembrance of the kinds of soil in the game uh, that will be proved fertile for different kinds of crops. So a lot going on in the, uh, in this scene. So I have different, uh, I have a general, for those of you who are interested in Godot, what I have is a folder and I have a database for that folder where I have the kinds of, um, the kinds of attributes for each of them. So this is crops. Uh, I need to change uh, change the picture for this onion, but we have different flavors that will eventually go into recipes as well. So they have five different kinds of flavors and I haven't put them all in here yet, but sweet, sour, bitter, umami, and I'm not remembering the last one. Uh, and then a description of the different kinds of attributes that you can have on uh, any of the the objects that you want to make and so these are I believe scriptable scriptable objects to where if I want to add something new say corn uh, let's say corn crop now all I need to do for the corn crop and when I open that is change it I think corn is sweet we can have sweet corn change the texture and now here in my database that I load up through what I have our game managers uh, I'll be able to load up into the crops and use them my new uh, my new my new crop which is corn so f keeping the project neat and uh, rational is important to just keep our code uh, in a workable state uh, we have all of these new crops that I'm adding to the game I'll soon be uh, allowing you to switch between them. Uh, I would, am experimenting now. Oh, here's our, our birds. I'm experimenting now with a smoother camera movement. It might seem a little jagged, I think because of the recording equipment. Uh, but there are different kind of camera smoothing and maybe I could work out a way to make this record and make this smooth at the same time. Uh, so here's another shout out to join the Discord. Uh, if you want to talk, look at some of the artwork, uh, some of the inspiration of the game, talk about the items and the quests and the storyline and all sorts of music and sounds. Here's a shout out to Alexander uh, Duterev who supplied the bird noises that you heard earlier in the game. Uh, there's also the Homefront Harvest subreddit uh, that I will start updating on a daily basis talking about the potential for AI powered data uh, dialogue in the, with a new AI powered system that's only going to be increasing in time in uh, its abilities in one of these dev blogs I'll talk about the kind of AI that we can have in the game uh, so go to Homefront Harvest subreddit check out the discord it really helps if you like and subscribe here on YouTube uh, so that we can get the word out of the game to other channels. Um, and then if you have something to offer, if you'd like to join the Discord and, and contribute, you know, I'm just a person here making the game. Uh, and so I look forward to your comments and questions and suggestions as well. So thanks for uh, supporting and uh, look forward next week to the next step blog of Homefront Harvest. Thanks, guys. I'll talk to you later.